St. Michael and All Angels is part of the Church of England, but the worship here is much closer to the Roman Catholic tradition than many Anglican churches, and both Catholics and Anglicans pray happily side by side at our next place of pilgrimage. Pam Rhodes went to find out the unique history of Walsingham in Norfolk. By the late Middle Ages, it was held that every Englishman should at some time in his life visit the Shrine of Our Lady here in Walsingham. The story of Walsingham's shrine begins in the 11th century when a devout noblewoman called Richeldis is said to have received instructions from the Virgin Mary. The task Richeldis was given was to recreate the house in Nazareth where the angel Gabriel informed Mary that she was to be the mother of God. I'm meeting Father Armitage to find out more. She asked Richeldis to build a replica of this house here in England so that the people of this country could share in her joy that her son became her saviour. And she wanted to share that joy with the people of England. That's why so many pilgrims come and share the message that God walks among us. So Richeldis did as she was asked and built the holy house? Well, yes, they started, but it just wouldn't fit together properly according to the instructions that she had. And so they just left it. They didn't know quite what to do. It just wouldn't work. And they went to bed and Richeldis prayed for guidance. And the story is that during the night, angels came and rebuilt it perfectly. And so the next morning when they came, there was the built holy house, which of course was the holy house that stayed until the Reformation. Like so many shrines and monasteries, Walsingham's holy house was destroyed on Henry VIII's orders. But remarkably, in 1931, Anglican Christians built an exact replica here. So this is the Holy House of Our Lady of Walsingham, built on the exact measurements of the Holy House of Nazareth, where the Virgin Mary received the angelic greeting. Well, this was always a, a Catholic shrine, and it's the Anglicans who rebuilt it. Well, in pre-Reformation times, it was one church, and the vision of uh, Alfred Hope Patton, the restorer of the shrine, was very much to bring back together the churches in the West. And so he built this shrine that people would come and pray for unity. There are building blocks in our altar, reassembled of different churches and abbeys that were destroyed at the time of the Reformation, and they are put back together in one as a sign of reconciliation and hope for the church to be rebuilt. Sitting directly underneath the Holy House lies a well that provides holy water for the pilgrims who travel here for healing and blessing. It's plainly a very moving experience for people. Do you think it gives them a deeper understanding and relationship with God? I think it does. Pilgrims come with a longing for God's healing touch, and the waters from the well are very much an expression of God's depth, of his love for our lives. And people are refreshed with physical water and on their spiritual journey are nourished with God's healing touch.